Good evening, everyone. Good evening, welcome to St. Irene. Um, before we begin, I'd like to start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Loving Father, thank you for gathering us here today to experience this story of witness and humility. Thank you for Kevin and his willingness to share his story of devotion to Mary. Please allow his testimony to be an example and inspiration to us to increase our faith and trust in the promises that our Blessed Mother made to those who seek her intercession through the Holy Rosary. Mother Mary, we always ask your intercession as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. My name is Craig Mazur. I'm the Director of Faith Formation here at St. Irene. Uh, on behalf of Father Clive and the staff, we're excited to uh, welcome you all here and especially to welcome Kevin. I started speaking with him probably about five months ago to try to arrange this evening, so we're excited to make it happen. Uh, he gave me a couple points uh, to introduce him. Kevin Matthews is a successful author and has written one of the most popular books in circulation at Dynamic Catholic Publication in partnership with Matthew Kelly. Kevin Matthews is also one of the most recognized radio personalities in broadcast history, especially in the Midwest. Kevin became a household name in Chicago and spoke to over 10 million radio fans weekly while broadcasting from the iconic Loop Radio Studios in Chicago. Kevin was recently named to the all-time list of top 20 radio entertainers among his radio peers and will soon enter the Radio Hall of Fame. In the fall of 2008, his wonderful world came crashing down. While on the air, he became partially paralyzed. God was calling Kevin, and he's here to share his incredible journey with us. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our guest, Kevin Matthews. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Keep it up. Keep it up. No, seriously, please stop. Okay, what a crowd. Thank you very much. How is everybody? I am, uh, I've got a couple of things here I've got to set. Um, first of all, everybody, um, Jim Short says hi, if anybody uh, remembers Jim. Um, and I want to get one thing. Jim is a real person, okay? I'm so tired of it. It's like, no, Jim is real, and Jim is in the book, uh, and I'll get to that. Um, I can maybe, I can do an impersonation of Jim, if you'd like. <laughs> Hang on, just stop. Stop. What are you doing here? Run. Get out, run. Get out, run. Don't read the book. You're late. <laughs> it's okay. How many people used to listen to me on that loop? AM 1000, good, okay, good, 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 good. How many have no idea who I am? <laughs> I, no, it's okay. I, I, you have great guardian angels until now, okay? And sorry, did the best. I love that when people have no idea or it's like, oh, this is gonna be, well, how do I get out of here? Um, but no, I, you, for those who don't know, I, for the next four and a half hours, okay, three and a half, four and a half would be ridiculous. You're gonna get to know who I am and the doors are gonna be locked and um, it's gonna be great. Um, I, hopefully, I will not fall, uh, but it's, it's really good to be here. I've got some notes and I wanna do these notes because there's some things I never talk about and at St. Irene, I want you to hear some stuff that I've never talked about, okay? Is that okay? And, and you can take your coats off. This isn't gonna be three and a half. It's, no, serious. Take your coats off, relax. I wanna thank Craig and everybody and Father and everybody. This is a beautiful church. Um, I haven't been out here. I'm staying over in Clarendon Hills with a friend. 
uh, Taps Gallagher, and Taps is in the book. He was an attorney. You're going to hear about Taps. But Naperville, Sandwich, Illinois, Huntley, Illinois. I used to hunt out in this area. It was, it's really great to be back home. I'm over in Michigan. You'll hear about that. So I haven't been in this part um, of Illinois and home in a long, long time. So it's really nice that we're all here together. Couple of things, happy Easter. It's still Easter, happy Easter, have fun. This is gonna be fun, uplifting, I hope. And it's because of not me, okay? I have nothing to do with this. I'm gonna to prove tonight that there is no such thing as a coincidence. There is no such thing as a coincidence. I'm telling you folks, there's no such thing. All you've gotta do is connect the dots of your life, go backwards and you can read your book. One of my favorite homilies is God knows who you are before you're even born. And again, you're here, you're being called not to see me, uh, but you're being called. People have prayed for you. You've prayed, and it's not to see Kevin at St. Irene out in Warrenville. It's, there's a reason. And it's a, really an honor to get back because I do travel the, uh, the country. And I, I was reminiscing just a little bit ago about the loop because I've got a gentleman in here who showed me pictures of when we did the Daisy Dash over in Clarendon Hills. That's 20 years of, that's gonna be, the 20th anniversary is this year. Do you people remember, and I was thinking, Willowbrook Ballroom before it accidentally got burnt to the ground? Yeah. I saw that over in Michigan. I go, oh yeah, it accidentally burnt to the ground. Love Chicago. But, no, seriously, yeah, okay. But we had the toga parties over at Willowbrook with Otis Day and the Knights. Can you believe that? Seriously. Um, I, I haven't talked to Johnny Brandmeier. He's alive. I know he's living up in Fond du Lac. I was up in Green Bay like a week ago, and Johnny's up in Fond du Lac. And I think, honestly, he just like fishes for walleye and... I, but he, we're all getting everybody together. Mr. Wirt, Larry Wirt, he's putting this documentary that's pretty cool together. Steve Dahl, talk to Steve a little bit. He's okay, he's still out in western uh, suburbs. Gary Meyer, before their big divorce. <laughs> Remember that day? Oh, thanks guys. You just ran the ship aground. He's out in Pittsburgh doing a podcast. He's got a daughter. Um, Little Danny Bonaducci, did that, remember that? Danny, honestly, you know, life is short and we're here on this earth for just such a short time. Danny just had a heart attack, he had a stroke. And he's doing good, pray for him. And um, it, it's, it's good, we're all, we are getting, uh, Larry Ward's putting this documentary that's, getting, it's gonna be good uh, next year and we're all getting together, so. But I was thinking, you know, thank you very much. The Loop, we grew up, we did everything together. We did, we, our kids grew up together. We had 10 million people listening to AM 1000 every week, 10 million people. Do you remember my little daughter, Teague? She's got four kids now, 10, seven, three, and two. She hasn't gotten out of the house in nine years. <laughs> and we live over in Michigan, she's three miles from me. Um, she's doing great. Trevor, my son, he's, remember him? He's a musician. He's uh, just, they just played, he's in a, a, a group called Dawes and plays with Dawes. They were just in Mexico City in front of 70,000 people. And yeah, and it's pretty funny because I was horrible at guitar. I took it in high school. <laughs> uh, and I taught Trev his three chords, so he owes me. He's doing well, he's not married, he's uh, out in Hollywood and just living a good life, he's a good guy. Uh, but other than that, it's just been, a lot's happened. It really has happened, but I really want to tonight to really, uh, you're not here to see me, um, honestly. I want you to look through me and I want you to see, not Kevin, but I want you, because she is here, is Our Lady, Mary. I really do. I am Mary's roadie. That's what I'm doing right now. I, I'm, I'm not kidding you. I am Mary's roadie. Um, 
If she wants to go to Warrenville, here we are. If she wants to go to Green Bay or Scottsdale, Arizona, here we are. And that's exactly what I'm doing these days. I'm Mary's roadie, and I, what a beautiful story it is. It really is. And it was nice that we opened up with a Hail Mary. And I'm gonna tell you just how much she loves you tonight. And I've had people, first of all, it, it, people will run into me and go, so when did you become a Jesus freak? That's nice, isn't it? Uh, well, actually, I became a Jesus freak at the age of six. Six. Because I grew up born in Pontiac, Michigan, which is north of Detroit. If you come from Detroit and you say you're from Pontiac, people back away from you. They check their wallet. Pontiac was tough. It was tough. And it was, I turned into this little junkyard dog. I, I and the, I, the screaming outside, because it's like early, I saw Kennedy and I was really little. I didn't know who he was, what a president was, but you see him get shot. You see Ruby get shot. You see these kids on my block on Francis Street. I remember hearing Vietnam for the first time and they were going to Vietnam. We had, uh, it was just, my dad called it hillbilly heaven. You know, because we had neighbors across the street that drive their car up on the lawn and get drunk and pass out and cops would come. So there's sirens, there's the beginning of the riots in Detroit. There was a lot of chaos and yelling in my house and alcoholism. I'm not here to be a victim. I know this isn't the Oprah show, but I was born Catholic. And as a six-year-old kid, I was going to church and I heard of this guy named God who could save me. And I remember literally being in my bed because it was a war zone outside and inside. And I would say to God, I wanna go, I wanna die. I wanna die, take me to heaven, take me to heaven, take me to heaven. I remember that all the time, take me to heaven, take me to heaven. A six year old is never going to be denied by God. And even a 99 year old, or no matter what age we are, I can prove to you that I let go of his hand. He never let go of mine, ever. And as many times as I let go, he's always there, always there. So what a wonderful time. I'm having the best time of my life. I really am. I'm doing animation with Jim Shorts and the Bears every week. You know, during the season, I've got this live stream 24 seven. I built my own radio station that you can hear in Paris or Warrenville or Naperville. That's gonna be released soon. I'm a, I've got four grandkids. You know, I'm blessed. I really am blessed. And to be doing this, I can't believe it. So yeah, I'm a Jesus freak. Um, and I'm glad because I was talking to somebody here, we were up in Minocqua, and I should have died up in Minocqua when we were on the loop. You know, there's so many times I look and I say to myself, how did I live through this? But God's got a plan for us, he really does. God's got a plan for us. And we made it, but we all grew up together, we had kids together, we partied together, we graduated together, there was Poplar Creek, Alpine Valley. We saw the best of music, 1986, 2005. I got to Chicago when Ferris Bueller's Day Off was released. And that's exactly how it started, and I always remember it. Chicago's a great city. I love being down there. I'm there this week. So it's really good to be back home. I met Debbie, my wife, how many think I'm divorced? It's okay. One. <laughs> One. I bet you all oh, taps. No, Debbie is 40 years we've been married this past Valentine's Day. Seriously, give that up. You know, the sanctity of marriage. But what I love about it, 40 years Debbie's been with me and she's a saint. She really is. I was born Catholic, she became Catholic. Tonight, I want you to remember a couple of things. There's no such thing as a coincidence. Debbie became Catholic and she chose the name Bernadette. 
after Bernadette Subaru. Hmm, 40 years ago, I started to hear Bernadette, 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 Bernadette. And then also, this story tonight that I am going to tell you runs parallel with what has happened in Fatima, the miracle of Fatima. Are you familiar with Fatima? Um, 105 years ago, three shepherd children see Our Lady. I talk about Mary a lot, and I will run into non-Catholics, and some tell me I'm going to go to hell. You love Mary too much. You're going to go to hell. You know that. And I go, well, I don't think I'm ever going to love her more than her son did, but if you think that, whatever. But the reason I bring that up in Fatima, Fatima starts with God, then Jesus, then Mary appears. And that's exactly how it all happened with what I'm going to show you tonight. First God, then Christ, now Mary. And we lived over towards Western Springs during the loop days, and um, I was Catholic, went to church, made sure the kids had, were baptized, First Communion, confession, and things got p political at that church. And I took, I took a, an easy way out. I thought, I'll escape. I'm out of here. I'm tired of the politics. I'm out. I'm going to go and Huntley and Sandwich. I'm going to go hunt. Bow hunt, shotguns, guns. Got deep in with Ted Nugent. Yeah, Ted. Ted's the most misunderstood guy. We bear hunted with Ted, bows, deer, everything. The outdoors. God created the heavens and the earth. I'm going to leave church. I'm going to just hunt. Then I started, no such thing as a coincidence, I started hanging out. I got introduced to an Iroquois Indian. I went down in southern Illinois to the, uh, uh, the Trail of Tears. There was a Sundance down there. I went down there, and his name, total Iroquois. His name, and I got to know him, and he, would, he lives up in Mac like Niagara Falls, up by the falls, so he was a steel worker. He built the Twin Towers, and I would fly him in because we got to know each other. He was an angel. He was an angel. People come into your life that are teachers, and his name was Santa, not S-A-N-A, -A, and his last name was Claus. <laughs> Seriously, and I would bring him into O'Hare, and he would always get lost, and then I would have to go, Paige, Santa Claus. <laughs> and he'd wear his hat and the feathers, and he was so proud. I'm not kidding you. His name was Crossing Feet Claus, because he, when he was little, his feet crossed. That's Crossing Feet Claus, but he was Santa Turn Claus, Iroquois, elder, beautiful human being. I loved him. At that time, I'm running pretty hot. I'm running pretty hot. I'm doing anything I want. We're the rolling stones of radio. Anything you want to do, you do it. And I was angry, I looking back at it. I got angry when Steve and Gary broke up. I did. You wrecked a great thing. You know, I just, and so what better people to hang with than Russell Means and Dennis Bank, who did the American Indian Movement, they took over Alcatraz, and they were political, and they were, yeah, radicals. Santa pulls me aside, he goes, I said, Santa, did you read Russell Means' new book? You knew him. Oh, yeah, I knew him. We ran guns at Wounded Knee together. Think of that. But he goes, brother, I gave up all that anger at the tree of life, the Sundance. He goes, you have a choice. Kevin, you do what you want. Look at the Milky Way galaxy. He goes, it's split into two. The short path is the political path. You can go on that road. It'll end. It'll destroy you. It'll kill you. Or you can stay on the spiritual path. That's the longest one. That's the hardest one. But that's the most rewarding because you go into creator's land for eternity. He worshiped the same God we do. I loved him. 
And I'll never forget that. And today I can really divide everything into politics. I stay away from the politics because it'll kill you, it'll destroy you, they're angry, they're mad. I try to stay on the spiritual path. That's not easy either. You're gonna be hated. That's so true since I've done this. Just the homily this week and last week where Christ is talking about follow me and you will be hated. They will hate you, they will crucify you just like they did me. So, Santa was a beautiful man. I met Joe Chasing Horse, who was, his grandfather was Crazy Horse. Crazy Horse, seven generations back. Minikanju Lukota, didn't live on the reservation. He is something else. I went to visit him in South Dakota, behind Mount Rushmore, did ceremony back there. I know, I watch, he goes, brother, those are FBI agents, they're taking our picture. Think of that. I wanna get my FBI file. I wanna see what those look like. But what I loved about Joe is Joe was, again, a kind, spiritual person. And he said to me, and I'll say it to you, when we are born, we cry the breath of life. Little babies, we cry the breath of life. And as we get older, each breath we take is a prayer because it comes closer and closer to the last prayer breath we ever take. Think of that, and it's true. I heard somebody, when Moses was at Mount Sinai with God, he asked God, what is your name? That's a good question. What is your name? And God said, Yahweh. Yahweh, which remind me, this is just like three weeks ago. Wow, that reminds me of Joe Chasing Horse about the breath. When you say Yao, you breathe out. When you say Wei, you breathe in. Every breath we take, God is with us. Think of that. You'll think about that when you breathe. You breathe out, even throw those masks. You breathe in, it's God. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Santa one afternoon was walking through a field. It was out by Sandwich, Illinois, beautiful field. And he's walking, he goes, brother, this is the floor. The floor, we're walking on the floor. The four directions, the east, north, south, west, those are your walls. The sky world, the ceiling, the sky is your ceiling. He said, that's your church. And that's a big church, a big responsibility. So I always know that I'm always in church. I am, I'm always in church. I'm church, I, I love this church the most because of the tabernacle. So radio is changing. Loops breaking up, satellite radio, phones, lots of entertainment coming in and it was time to leave. I, my first radio job was in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I decided I'm gonna go back to the first station I ever worked with at. I'm gonna be able to do the morning show. I'm gonna be able to program and create all kinds of programs. This will be good. Go back to the starting line, start all over. Kids, they're on their own. We'll sell the house. No, put the house up. Here in Chicago, 2008, the housing market just crashed. So I'm driving back and forth from Chicago and Michigan for two years, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I wasn't happy. My wife and I, she was here, I was there and I'll never forget it. it was a Tuesday at 7.16 on a Tuesday. I'm working at a radio station where I started with Ed Buchanan, the guy who hired me first in radio. 7.16, I can't move. I can't move my hand, I can't move my leg. I think I'm having a stroke. I'm not kidding, I, I can't move. And I said, we, I talk, I didn't play music, I was like the loop, I talked. 
And then I went to break and I said, Ed, I can't move. I can't move my hand. I can't move my leg. I don't know what's wrong. I got through the show and that was a Tuesday. I didn't go to the hospital until Friday. And I drove from Grand Rapids to Rush downtown. I got an MRI and Debbie and I went right over in Hinsdale to the neurologist over there and she said, we have something, we, there is something in your brain. And I took advantage, I said, well, at least I have a brain. And I showed and I nudged Debbie, look, I have a brain. And it's not where you always say it is, it's in my head. Are you seeing this, Deb? But there was a walnut-sized growth and the neurologist said, we think this is cancer. If it is where it's at, we can't operate. There's nothing we can do. We'll do a biopsy in about five days, but if this is cancer, prepare yourself because there's nothing we can do. In other words, get ready to die. And I handled it well, because I'm, I'm thinking a biopsy, the three stooges, and the drill, and the woo -woo -woo -woo. I can't even, look at it, it took me Tuesday to Friday, I'm thinking of a drill, I'm nudging Debbie, I'm not serious about life at all. You know, what am I worth, whatever. What, whatever. And I'll, that, was a, that was a tough time for Deb. We got back to the hospital, I'm an hour away from getting a drill into my brain, and then suddenly, the neurologist comes in and says, you don't have cancer. You have MS, multiple sclerosis. Debbie and I started jumping up and down, seriously. Jumping, oh great, I got MS. That's good, right? That's good. There's no cure? Okay, am I gonna die? So I'm jumping up and down. It's not brain cancer. I have no idea what I have. All I know is they've got to shrink that thing, so they put me on steroids, they put me on drugs. It was horrible. Every day I'm taking shots, it was horrible. And suddenly, radio was really difficult. I mean, I was, t I was exhausted. I wasn't thinking about radio. Dave Mason is a friend of mine. Dave, only you know and I know. I brought him into Grand Rapids, him and some other musicians, they were doing an acoustic set. I'm in this bar in Grand Rapids. I'm introducing Dave Mason. The lights, the heat, I can't move. MS loves heat, loves stress. I say, Dave Mason, now I'm standing here, I can't get off the stage. And I almost fall into Dave's guitars. They get me off stage. That's a great look, isn't it? And I love Dave, but the radio station could tell, this isn't what's going on here. You know, this guy was from the loop. Look at him. It's like a Stephen Hawkins. And I'm working, I'm working. I just signed a new deal. Somebody said the boss wants to see you. And I went down to the office, he said, you're fired. You're fired. Wait a minute, I just signed a new contract. I don't care, sue us. We'll give you two weeks severance pay. And all I could think about was Ray Liotta in Goodfellas at the end of the movie where he's standing. 30 years in radio, I get two weeks paid. That's it. How am I gonna live? How am I gonna, we just bought a house. How am I gonna feed? What's going on here? The next day, Saturday, it was devastating. It was, you know, I got up, no coincidence. I thought, I'm driving. I've always heard voices, and my mom in the book always used to say, I used to look up at the sky and talk to spacemen. I always talk to myself. Look at all the voices on the radio. Voices, voices, voices. I have, my friends are voices. But this day, I heard a voice that said, go buy your wife some flowers. I'm serious. I don't know, I, it just comes. Go buy your wife some flowers. No coincidence I look up, there's a flower shop. Right there. You're right, Debbie's gone through a lot. I pull in, I go up to the door. I've got MS, it just snowed, it's slippery. 
I can hardly walk, and I walk up to the door, and I notice that to the left of my eye, I see a dumpster. And then at the dumpster, I look, and I might be 10 yards from the dumpster. I can tell, 10 yards, bow hunting. And I look, and I could tell that's a statue, and I walked over to it, and I'm looking down at it, and the statue is looking at me. She's on her back, broken in half at the waist. Her hands are missing. She's sunk into the mud. She's covered in weeds and garbage. And a McDonald's wrapper was hitting her from the wind. And that's the Mary. That's Mary. I'm not a good Catholic, but that's Mary. And then I heard another voice that was very stern, seriously, that said, will you deny me? Will you deny my mother? I looked, and there she is. And tonight, if somebody, would you like to go up and just gently pull this down for me? Just because I don't want to trip. That'd be embarrassing. If you can just drop that cloth. This is Our Lady of the Broken. This is the statue. This is Broken Mary. You can say, hello. <laughs> it's okay, <laughs> folks. But if you notice, broken at the waist, her hands are missing, she's looking up at me, and no way am I gonna leave her here. I'm not a religious man, but I'm not gonna do that. So I go to the door, open the door, little bell, clerk comes, says, yes, can I help you? I said, I'd really like to buy that statue that's out by the dumpster. Oh no, that's not for sale. That's a family heirloom. Then I heard the voice again, even sterner. Will you deny me? Will you deny my mother? And I thought, I'll steal it. <laughs> That's what I'll do. What would the guys in Melrose do? We'll steal it and then burn this place to the ground. <laughs> but for the first time, I just honestly said a prayer. I just said, God help me. And the next thing that happened, I just vomited these words that said, I'll pay money to the nuns that live out around here. What? Nuns that live out around here. The clerk then goes, you're that voice, you that voice. You're Kevin Matthews. You got fired yesterday. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I go, yeah, I got fired yesterday. What happened? I don't know. But can I get, I'll spend some money in your name if I can take those, the, the Mary. Okay. And I didn't even buy Debbie flowers. I didn't. I went out. I hate to talk about a woman's weight. She's heavy. So I lift up the first piece, put her in my truck in the back, get the second piece, put her in and put her together, put a little blanket. And I got in the car, radio's on, I turned that off, I'm never gonna listen to radio again, I hate radio. I turned the heat up, and that's when I said to her, I said, Mary, I'll take care of you. I really did, Mary, I'll take care of you. I drove her home, put her in the garage, made a little bed, showed Deb. She thinks I'm crazy anyways, but Debbie loves, seriously. But this statue, by the way, Bernadette, this is a statue of Lourdes that Bernadette, Subaru, in Lourdes. Any coincidence? That'll come in and play a big part. I called, I started, I knew a priest at St. Anthony's in Grand Rapids. We did some cooking together and charity. His name was Father Mark. I called him up. I said, Father Mark, I found this statue of the Virgin Mary at a dumpster. I got her. Where can I have her fixed? He told me about a monument uh, company in the spring, okay, I'll take her there. So spring comes, I'm unemployed. I take her over, this guy looks at her and he goes, oh, we can put new hands on her, we can paint her, we can, she won't even look broken. And that is when everything, the emergency room, the cancer, the MS, everything just collapsed. I just, I started to cry. 
in front of this man. And he's looking at me like, could someone please call the police? <laughs> I, I said, no, I don't want to fix her. I want to keep her broken. She's broken like me. I remember that. She's broken like me. I just want to put it together. I got her home. Then I called Father Mark. I knew I, she was in the garbage, folks. She was down in the dirt, the mud. How many people saw her there and did nothing? How many voices did they hear? Will you deny me? Will you deny my mother? And you're going to be asked that as you leave tonight. You'll hear it again. You'll hear it again. Father Mark came over, blessed her, and that's when the matrix started. I've got, I, call, I said to Father Mark, I want to call her Broken Mary. We could do something maybe together. He's like, yeah, I want to get out of your house now. <laughs> so I'm there in the house, unemployed. I've got a mullet and I'm still smoking. Marlboro Lights, every morning have my coffee. Hey Mary, how are you? Hey Mary, how are you? But what's interesting now, I can look back at it, it was so many things started. And God, it was though God said, I'm going to leave you with my mother, and she's going to clean you up. And that's exactly what happened. We'd sit, and I'm telling you folks, I started having dreams of roses, literally roses and smelling roses, having dreams of roses. Before I got fired, a woman whose son was Oliver, he was seven, he has cancer, and became a big fan of the radio show, and I had dreams from Our Lady that I was to buy a rose for every child that was in treatment at DeVos Children's Hospital in Grand Rapids. That time, that's over 3,000 roses I've got to buy. How am I going to do that? I called up a florist that I know, Bing, and he donated all 3,000 roses. We put them together. I contacted the hospital. I, Oliver, the little seven-year-old, the first picture ever taken of Broken Mary, little Oliver's got his arms around Mary, children his medical tech. You can see that today. But he's with Mary. That moment he didn't have cancer. He just it went away. And the, the statue's in there and kids and parents are coming down. The aroma of roses cut through sterile, that hospital smell. And I took the rose petals, she was there for a week, and the roses, and it, I dried the rose petals, and I took oil and I made paint. We painted a picture. We entered it as Broken Mary at our art prize, and I got press, the first press I ever got after I'd been fired. Kevin Matthews, Broken Mary, a statue, and it, it starts to go, it starts to go. And, um, I also saw Father Mark again, and he said, don't you owe nuns money? <laughs> uh, yeah. And he goes, the nuns you're talking about are the Franciscans. And so he goes, why don't we take the statue out and uh, tell them how you found it. Now, little Franciscans, there's a height requirement. If you're over four feet, you've got to be a Carmelite or a Dominican, they're tiny in their little brown habits. I felt like Richard Dreyfus in Close Encounters. They got me and they just moved me all over the place, put the statue up and I, they said, would you say a few words after dinner? And I remember saying that I found her and she was broken like me and her name is Broken Mary, she's broken like me and we're all broken, but we're loved by God. Father Mark, we left. Father Mark's driving home. And he goes, boy, that'd make a good homily. We're all broken, but we are loved by God. He said, Kevin, how about if I want you to come Sunday. I'll start the homilies. Will you finish all three with that message? I've done comedy. 
Grant Park, Dana Carvey, <laughs> Zanies. How hard can a church be? I'll never forget that. So I've got the statue at 7.30, I'm up, and we're all broken, we're loved by God, and I'm about ready to end the 7.30 Mass, and that voice, will you deny me, will you deny my mother, comes back. It says, say a Hail Mary for my mother. I haven't said a Hail Mary since fourth grade when I was learning how to say a Hail Mary. None took gum out of my mouth. Literally, I, and I, I, we're gonna say a Hail Mary, I get through it. How, I don't know. Do the 10 o'clock mass. We're all broken, we're loved by God. The voice, say a Hail Mary for my mother. Said it, got through it. I went to Father Mark and said, I don't want to do the 1130. I'm dying up here. I'm dying up here. I know when I'm dying, I'm dying. He goes, turn around. He said, look, there are people on their knees in front of the statue. I want you to know because recently a friend of mine, and I don't want to name names, came to a talk when I was in Orland Park not too long ago. <coughs> man cow, <coughs> man cow, <laughs> man cow, <coughs> excuse me. And I, I know man cow and he's seen me before and he's Catholic and he, I thanked everybody on Instagram and he wrote on Instagram, um, do you, uh, do you worship the statue? Does it have supernatural powers? And I hear that a lot. And I go, no, I don't worship any statue. She was, you know, built at a factory of Mary's. And no, I, I, I don't worship her. I love her. She means a great deal to me, I said. But I don't worship her. Is she supernatural powers? I don't know, I don't think so. She's made out of concrete. But I can tell you, where this statue is, there's Mary. You come here, that tabernacle, Christ is here. Mary's here. Mary's always where she's wanted and asked to have, come to Mary, come to her. So, every mass that I said, I also said she doesn't belong to me. You can take her home. If you know somebody who's broken, you know somebody's sick, hospital, hospice. She's died with people. She's been in prisons. She's been around the most broken. I'm telling you, in the 10 years that I've been with her, and I asked Mary, Mary, you can send the most broken. I can't believe, I, I, I'm, be careful what you plan, ask for. The most broken are coming. I'm telling you, are coming. And so people would take her and then write stories and send them to Father Mark. And Father Mark said, Kevin, these people, you should write a book. You should write this down. Don't lose this. You should write this down. You know, one of the Franciscan nuns we had dinner with is a writing professor at Grand Valley University. I'll set up a lunch and let's talk about the book. And I'm thinking, great, I'm like Huck Finn, I'm a con. I'll have her write the book. <laughs> I'll be a millionaire. So we went to this Italian restaurant. We put her in a booster chair, because she's Franciscan. <laughs> and I'm saying, listen, sister, this story, it's great. You could write a great book. She looks at me, she goes, I'm not gonna write a book. I go, I don't know how to spell. She's, I mean, it's back and forth. She goes back to her mother superior and says, there's no way I am writing a book with Kevin Matthews. He's worked with Howard Stern, he's Satan. No, she, have you heard his radio show? And little mother Colleen Ann, she loves me. <laughs> Sister Lucia. <laughs> so, five days later, okay, this is how it's gonna work. I'll ask you a question and you type it and send it to me. Okay, tell me about your college radio station. Folks, my college radio station you think the loop was different? Wow. I, I'm in a church. I, unbelievable what that station, I was learning and playing Miles Davis, Frank Zappa. The professor would take hallucinogens and do a show for two days. It was unbelievable. One day I was doing mornings because everybody had clock radios, I was late. And I just said, hey, I'm sorry I'm late, but 
the president of the college got murdered overnight. Oh yeah, <laughs> that went over well. They closed the campus, it was a crime scene until they found out, oh, it's Kev. They took the station away from us, the FCC, and made it into a hair salon. <laughs> Seriously, I still need three credits. I got this letter from Don Lovers. It's perfect, it's still framed and whatnot. But she wrote back, oh my. <laughs> that was just question number one. So she's writing, we're writing, we're writing, we're writing. It's like 2015, I'm going back to church. Debbie's back, you know, I, disability and whatnot. But I also thought, I'm gonna go to church. I really don't know what Lent is, but I'm gonna say, Mary's gonna teach you when you're with her, I'm smoking mullet, the rosary. I said to Father Mark, I said, I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna say the rosary for Lent. Okay, Lent comes, I don't know how to say the rosary. I had to Google how to say the rosary. Little Irish guy comes up, a little Irish priest, he's saying the rosary, it's scratchy, I don't know what it is. I go, after about the fourth day, I go, man, I, I used to do radio, I can do that. I'll make a rosary app and I'll be a millionaire. <laughs> Think of what I was doing. And so I started to learn about the rosary. I had no idea. Do you know it comes from Mary? It's Dominic, 12th century. I, I'm learning uh, Louis de Montfort. I'll never forget, Debbie came back. She was in Fatima in the year 2000 with her mother. They toured Europe. She was in Fatima on uh, the year 2000 on Mother's Day. And she brought this Fatima booklet back with her, and it's Mary, of image of Mary, Our Lady of Fatima. I used to take that book with treatment and stuff like that, and that's the only thing I have, but Mary, 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 Mary. Now I'm having this, I'm learning about the rosary. And Dominic, when Dominic's mother, this is France, 12th century, she's pregnant for Dominic, she's having, she sees Dominic is a dog of God that breathes fire. And I thought, I want to be a dog of God and breathe fire. How cool is that? <laughs> Louis de Munford, Debbie brought all these books back and I, I can been, been online and I didn't know her that well, but I'm reading Louis de Munford and I said, Mary, I want to read that book. I got to buy that book. I went in to take a break. I went into the bedroom. Debbie was cleaning all, our, our bedroom and all the closet and on top of a stack of books is Louis de Munford. She starts to, this is what I love about her. And then I start, I'm gonna record the rosary. I didn't know that it's 10 Hail Marys. I thought it was eight, <laughs> 10. I'm going back and forth. The nun is helping me write the book and the nun also got the privilege to help me with my diction. That poor woman, she would say, Kevin, and I would have to start over. It's hallowed, not hollowed, you know. And so for the next two years, we're writing the book. I'm recite, you know, recording the, the rosary. And then she comes in, sister comes in. She said, Kevin, it's done, read it. And we had to look for spelling errors. And I can remember I opened the book, Broken Mary, and the first page has haunted me because it was Pontiac. And I read two pages, three, and man, it was taking me back exactly to that time. I want to die. Take me to heaven. I closed the book. A week later, she said, did you read it? And I said, yes. Good, I'm lying to a nun. She goes, you know, she sent it to three of the biggest publishing companies in America. All three wanted it. Mary's going to go with the big and the best to reach. She goes, Kevin, do you know that Dynamic Catholic and Matthew Kelly wants the book? And I'm going, who's Matthew Kelly? Is he in the Foo Fighters? <laughs> we go with Matthew Kelly. She kind of likes me a little bit better now. And the book is printed, and it's no coincidence. I wanted to 
take the proceeds of this book and take the priest, Father Mark, and sister who's written this, and we're going to go to Fatima because of that pamphlet. Fatima, 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 Fatima. Folks, that's all I could think about. That's all I can think about to this day is Fatima, Fatima, Fatima. Go to Fatima. So we decided I'll take the proceeds and we all fly to Fatima, 100th anniversary. Uh, Grand Rapids Catholic Magazine said, we want you to journal, all of you, journal. And I remember this, and I tell you tonight, that the closer I got to the apparition site, the sadder I got, the sadder I got. And the presence of Mary, I don't know how I can explain this. I do know that when Mary gives me something, I have to immediately write it down because I can't memorize it. I can't memorize it. I gotta write it down. And I remember this feeling, the closer I got to the apparition site, if I gave you all my sorrow, it would kill you. I wrote that down, I remember that. I was there for a week. They had arranged myself and sister, Father Mark did three masses at Fatima. I was allowed now, two years, I'm reciting the rosary. I wear my rosary now, I wear my scapular, and I'll tell you why. But I'm at the apparition site, and I'm reciting the rosary to people from all over the world. It's at night, I'm reciting the rosary. There's the Fatima statue. There's Mary looking down at me, and I could just think I've come a long ways. There she is. Folks, I didn't know how to say a rosary. I didn't own a rosary. Here I am saying the rosary at Fatima. That week, there's a statue in Fatima where the children went in August. They couldn't go to the apparition site because they were in jail. Little Jacinta, little Francisco, eight and seven, brother and sister, Lucia, 10. And I'm at this statue, I'm all by myself. The nun and the priest are gone. I'm all by myself looking at Mary, the statue of Mary where she appeared in August 1917. I look and I said, Mary, I wrote a book and I've got two rosary apps. Now what? Now what? And as soon as I said, now what? How derogatory. I, something came whizzing by my head. I will never forget it. It hit the ground, bricks shattered. And I said to myself, if whatever that was, if it hit me, it would have killed me. And it was this giant pine cone. I looked at it and hear her presence come. Plant the seeds of my rosary. A pine cone is seeds. Plant the seeds of my rosary. Father Mark comes back up. I said, how many pine cones do you see on the ground? He looks at me, because he wants to go home early because of me. He goes, none. I said, well, this big one almost hit me, and we were in an olive garden. There's no pine. There's, where did this come from? And I have it to this day. Go plant the seeds of my rosary. I know for a fact that's all Mary wants me to do is plant the seeds of my rosary. We're almost done. How many of you want to go to heaven? Some of you not sure? <laughs> I don't know, Kev. We got the skybox for the Bears, and they got a new coaching staff. <laughs> Seriously, how many of you want to go to heaven? I'm with a nun. Good. Yeah, you should, because heaven is real. I, by the way, this week, I'm with Sister Angela, the nun who is speaking at St. John Cantus, I brought her in. I brought her in twice. She's a young nun doctor. She's the postulator for Jacinta Francisco, who became saints. She's the postulator for Lucia. She's with me. I gave her a Bulls jersey last night, Taps Gallagher. No, she loved the Bulls when she and her brother would grow up. She flipped out at Harry Carey's last night. She couldn't believe it. She wanted to fly home and go show her brother. But here I am with this woman that works with the Pope and the Vatican, and she, told, she asked me that question a long time ago. She said, do you want to go to heaven? I said, yeah. She goes, well, do you know you have to be a saint? 
And I said, well, thank you for wrecking my life, sister. <laughs> How am I, I'm not gonna, I, I'm not, well, that'll never happen. She goes, no, not a, con, a canonized saint, like Saint Mother Teresa, no. Saint to T, saint-like. You have to become saint-like. Be nice, start there, be nice. Seriously, we were born, all of you, everyone, you looking at me, we were born to be saints. We were born to be disciples. We are children of God. Outside these doors, the valley of tears. We were born to be saints and disciples. Be nice. Be nice. Be nice. Start there. Start there. I think I have a theory that God is in Meyer a lot. The shopping center, Meyer. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Because it was Christmas, this Christmas, and there was a long line, I'm in line, and I hear this beep, 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 and I'm finally getting up, and this poor clerk, all day, that's all she hears is beep, 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 be nice, be nice. I looked at her name tag, and I said, Beth, how are you? Oh, busy. Yeah, you look busy. Line's long, man, when do you get off? Oh, a couple hours. She had a badge. I said, who is that, that picture? They said, who's a football player? Oh, that's my son. He's a linebacker at Michigan. And what's his name? And we just started to talk. Seriously, we just started to talk. And it's Christmas time. I said, you know what? Thank you so much. And tell your son, I hope he becomes a, a football pro player in the pros. And thank you. And I said, God bless you. I said that. God bless you. You don't have to be a priest to say that to people. Say it with your heart. God bless you. That made her day. I was kind. God bless you. I go to clerks now. That's my MO. Be kind. Be kind in this world that has so much hate. I have been in prison after prison after prison, and these are lifers. I don't know what they did. I'm not allowed to ask. It wasn't parking tickets. They're prisoners. I have got prisoners that I said, you know, Mary started the sign of the cross. It was Mary, after Christ was crucified, she went and retraced the steps. And I said, why don't you, why don't we start the stations of the cross in the prison yard? Well, we can't, because the other inmates will knock it down. I just said, do like Mary did, just walk it off. And so they started the stations of the cross in this prison. They're reading, they're reciting, they're holding rosaries now. Rosaries. Tattoos and rosaries. You got to be honest because they'll kill you in there. They know, they can smell BS. One inmate holding a rosary said, You know, I'm going to die here. I said, Yeah, but you get to choose where you want to go for eternity. You've been to confession, you're holding a rosary. You get to choose where you want to go. We all do. This is like O'Hare Airport, people. St. Irene's, we're in a lobby. Where's the next flight? It's our last flight, last connection. Where are we going to go? Because God has a plan for you. God has a plan for you, and so does Satan. Seriously. I'm so tired of people criticizing and mocking and getting mad at God. Well, if there's a God, why are there children dying of cancer, or floods, or, no, no. He's given us everything we need, but what do we do? I tell you this, the Catholic Church is Jesus Christ. It doesn't belong to a pope or a bishop or cardinals or parishioners. It was built on the cross. It was the, the, the cross. Jesus suffered 5,466 wounds. He had no blood left. He was beaten, mocked naked in front of his mother. 5,466 wounds. 
I choose now to live in one of those wounds. He died for you. He died for us. John was the only disciple there. Think of that. The rosary is, what I love about the rosary is it's Mary's umbilical cord. And she feeds us Jesus through the rosary, Mary's rosary. Mary's rosary is the most powerful weapon on the planet. When you hold Mary's rosary, and it is Mary's, she's given it to us, just like Dominic, you are holding the power of God. You are literally holding the power of God. And when you hold the power of God, anything's possible. I want you tonight, I, I have two rosary apps, go to brokenmary.com, they're free. You can listen in your car anywhere. They've been downloaded hundreds and hundreds of thousands of times all over the world. The designer of the app was an atheist who now loves Mary. You listen to her, you listen to her, you go to her. You take the most impossible things and you take them and send them to Mary, give them to Mary. My job is to get people to Mary and she does the rest. She takes you to her son. This nun that I'm with, Sister Angela, she said, Kevin, we are all attending the school of Mary. Mary's real. When we take out our rosary and we say, Hail Mary, Mary mystically comes to our side and she's with us. She is. She's with us. Mary reminds me of the time that I danced with my mother 40 years ago with Debbie, our wedding. And when I recite the rosary, it's as though I'm at a wedding and I'm dancing with my mother. I love Mary. I will die for Mary. I am a dog of God. I am leashed by the rosary and I will protect everything that is holy, everything that has been touched by Jesus Christ, and everything that has been graced by Mary, the mother of Jesus. The rosary, the rosary, the rosary. Plant the seeds to my rosary. When I was in Fatima, before I left, there's that bleeding heart of Mary it bleeds. I went to Mary and I said, Mary, I caused your heart to bleed. I owned it. I said, Mary, I don't know. I'll take the biggest thorn that's plunged into your heart. I'll take and I did that to you. I will never hurt you again, Mary. Ever will I hurt you again. Folks, I used to open strip clubs. I used to hang out with strippers. Now I hang out with nuns. Even Father Mark said, what <laughs> amazing. But I said it, confession. How many of you haven't been to confession in a while? Raise your hand, God knows. It's, you know, I hated confession and I would, I would just soon go and fly on a plane and go to a foreign country. He doesn't know English. <laughs> but I went to confession with Father Mark, and then I went to confession. Two days ago, I just went to confession. You know what, I take Mary to confession with me. Because the confession, like the Catholic Church, was born at the crucifixion. He died for our sins. The first confessional was at the cross. So I take Mary in with me, and I confess. Mary cleans us with confession. Don't be ashamed. A priest, and Father's there. A priest is a human being. I'll even go, Father, I could ask you, Father, I haven't been to confession here in a long time. Are you gonna yell at me? Are you gonna mock me? Or are you gonna listen? He's gonna listen. Ask the priest that. I'm scared, I haven't been to confession in a long time. He is a shepherd, you are lambs. Go to confession. That's what Mary wants us to do, the rosary, confession, and last but not least, the Eucharist, the body of Christ, the body. Eat and you shall live. That is not a disc. That is Jesus Christ. That is Jesus, that is Jesus, that is Jesus. You go to him. 
At his cross, he had two people on each side. One mocked him, said, if you're king, let us down. The other said, Jesus, I belong here. You don't. Will you remember me? And he said, yes, from this day forward. What do you want to do? Do you want to go up or do you want to go down? The body of Jesus is here in that tabernacle. Mary's womb was the first tabernacle ever. She gave life to Jesus. Go. In this world, be faithful to the Eucharist, confession, and the rosary, and you will do well. You will do well. Someday, God will say, who have you loved and what have you done for me? What are you going to say? Before you leave, he'll say, oh, and did you love my mother? I said to you, God has a plan for you, and so does Satan. I have never been more attacked in my life. Never thought that was real when we were doing the rosary app. Kept crashing. That little nun said, give me my take my hand, Kevin, and we said a Hail Mary and sent it to Apple. She said, little sister, said, Satan hates you, Kevin, so much. You left him. He hates you. He hates children. He hates you. I was praying not long ago. I said, Mary, how do I get young kids to the rosary? How? Help me. I look up, there's Aquinas College, a Catholic college. I said, I'll write the Catholic College. I'm Kevin Matthews, Broken Mary. I want to come over and talk to the young ones. That same day, for the first time, I invited Sister Angela from Fatima. I said, Dear Sister Angela, I want to bring you to America. I hit two emails, hit them, hit send. I'm waiting for like two, three weeks. And I said to Father Mark, Nobody's writing back. Get off the phone with Father Mark. And I felt this chill come down. It was just the worst evil overtaking I ever had. And I heard this voice that said, she's done with you. You sin too much. Not weeping, she's done with you. You weep too much. She's done with you. And I went to bed. I woke up that morning. I put my feet on the floor and I said, Mary, are you done with me? Do I sin too much? And as soon as I said that, the phone rang. It was Aquinas College. We just got back from spring break. Sorry, we haven't called you. We'd love to have you come on over to campus. Thank you. Hang up the phone. As soon as I hang up the phone, it was Joan Alex from Florida. Did you see your email? Sister Angela's coming from Fatima. Mary is real. God is real. Jesus is real. Go to her. That rosary, that rosary, that rosary, it's her umbilical cord. She feeds you Christ. It's Easter. He's risen. Happy Easter. He's coming again. Be ready. And it was a pleasure to speak with you. And oh, I think God's going to say, Kevin, when you were at Meyer, Beth was me. I love you all. I'll sign books. And you're all welcome to come up and be with Our Lady of the Broken. Go to Mary, she loves you, and God bless you, and happy Easter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. God bless you. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Thank you so much, Karen Kelly, for, for those words of inspiration, and above all, for the witness. You know, if there's one thing that I always love, is this lady. I think Mary drew me to priesthood. For those who have heard of my short stories here and there in my homilies, I know she has a reason for that. If there's one thing that I really loved about um, our speaker tonight, when he came in, I had never seen him, never heard of him. Yet, he asked me that he does not want to leave this place without a blessing. And when I looked into his eyes, I could see he was really genuine, and I knew there was something powerful 
about him. And I've been listening to him and I've been thinking, you know, I just came back from a presbyteral council meeting with the bishop. And one thing that came out that the USCCB is actually trying to talk about is that, can you imagine, 70% of Catholics do not believe in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. 70%. And tonight when our speaker is talking, I remember, if there's one person who will draw you back to Jesus, it's her. Go back to the first miracle, the first sign that John says, the wedding at Cana in Galilee. Remember that story? Who was the first person to tell Jesus to get out in the scene? her and then she turned and she told everybody else do as he tells you do as he tells you and I believe that is exactly the same connection that we make tonight how blessed we are that our mother Mary have come to our speaker and endowed him with the gift of preaching about Jesus talking about the love of God, and above all, in following Jesus more closely. We don't pray to Mary. She always directs us to the, to, uh, to the person to pray to. And for all of us who are gathered here tonight, God sees that longing. Keep it up. And if you're struggling with your faith, you are not alone. You are not alone. Trust her. She will guide you to her son. She will guide you to our Heavenly Father. We are, we are all Catholics. So before we end up this, I would like to do two things. One, I'll give you my blessing because today you are in my house. You're in the house of God. As a priest, we are supposed to be blessing people, so I'll give you my blessing. And then I'll all ask you up to stand up as we finish up. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave, Maria. Have a wonderful night, everybody.